Well, before we get started with our day here, Nate's got an issue with this 9410 that we need to address. Great meow. This inner wheel has fully moved itself out a little bit. So we're going to pull the dual off. I didn't like the way that That was strange. It almost was like one wheel turned a little bit and the other one didn't. I don't know. Hopefully it hasn't hurt this hub here at all. But we're going to find out once we get this all apart. So it is Saturday the 14th. We got through the 13th without any issues, right? Yeah. So this is Nate's day off. How many how many days straight have you worked so far? Maybe 70 or 80? 70 or 80? Oh. Well, well, last weekend. Oh well. Yeah. Alright, little update on the Mac here. Jared put this differential in a week ago today. It's rear differential. Ah, uh, him and Andrew. They worked on it Friday night late got it set in there got it bolted down in a couple of places then they called it a night these are a top load <clears throat> he wanted to take a little bit of a peek a little look see to the front diff and i got an impact too nate oh, he's got one he's all set Took a look see the front diff and it had a couple of teeth missing on the front diff as well. So he threw his hands up in the air and he says, I'm junking it. I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm sick and tired of monkeying with it. I said, you put the transmission in, you got this other differential. Just throw another differential in. So he thought about it through the weekend and he felt a little better about things. So he Pulled the differential out of the rear, he was just going to part everything out. He had this listed on Facebook Marketplace and that and all the different pieces and whatnot. So I said, just, you know, just, come on, you got to, you got to just get it together. Pulled the rear diff out, pulled the front one out and swapped the new one or the reman in the rear for one that was geared different. I think these are 568s coming from 456s or something like that. So he's got two differentials that are geared obviously the same, but they're geared even lower. Now I had some numbskull that was awful worried about Jared tearing equipment up. This stuff happens. We're dealing with a lot of weight. We're dealing with a lot of torque. And in some instances, there is not much give. These differentials were about, I don't know, 16 or $1,800 a piece for remands. Not a lot of money. Not a lot of money at all. So we better get out there and give old Nathan a hand. Got all them bolts out already and the wheels off and you're just ready for me to Oh, okay. So I can just keep walking around with the camera, right? And look all cute like and look all pretty and how are you gonna take that off? Underneath the tire or are you going over? I'll pull it off underneath. Okay, alright. Let's get to work here. I gotta put the camera down. Alright. We'll move my nephew's little rock sore out of the way here. Ah. This is a nicer cab than I've got. This is a hard shell. Yeah. All right, we are just 
gonna interrupt you guys for a brief little moment here. Olight is having a sale that starts on the 24th of October and it runs for a couple, two, three days here. Click on the link in the description of this video to get the particulars on that. One light that they had sent me, they have sent me a couple of these now, is the Artfeld Pro. It's got a different style pocket clip on it compared to the regular Artfeld. This is a rechargeable uh, light. However, this one has a UV light on it along with the laser light or laser pointer. And it also has just a regular flashlight on there. So click on the link in the description to get the particulars on this sale if there isn't any uh, sale items that suit your fancy if you just type in Andy FFF in the discount code box you'll get 10% off of any of the non-sale items another thing that I want to bring to your attention I am having a website put together and we're going to start selling uh, hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts, and so on. So, uh, kind of keep your eye out for that. I'll announce once we get that up and running here. But to give you an example of what the hats look like, I just happen to have one on here now. We've got a couple of different colors of these. We've got a light gray and then this uh, black and dark gray. So, We'll be doing that here shortly. So let's get back to the video and I need to get another truck to slide on in here and uh, we'll keep her rolling. All right, so we're using the uh, blade for a jack so he's got one more to get out hold on a second mate let me spread these out So this has come into contact a little bit this with the uh, yeah we need a big a bigger uh, a bigger impact on there so we'll join up with you in a moment here yeah. there you go yeah we almost had to get the new one out huh uh, Well, a little flexing power first. Or do you wanna, is it against it? I'm doing it! <laughs> I don't know if you got, oh, you, you got it. Can you squeeze a little farther to get it? Or do you need a screwdriver? Watch your eyeballs. All right, safety snap ring needs a screwdriver. Well, we've got the dual off, dual hub off. 
and we had to take everything off so that we could get at those bolts for that inner wheel he's loosening all of those up once we get everything loose the blade is leaked down we'll have to go ahead and we'll have to go ahead and uh get her broke loose and then we'll we'll uh have to wiggle that in with the forklift so that tire i don't know if you guys could see it in the camera but that tire did wiggle a little bit so That impact is about to run out of gas. I do have a brand new Ingersoll in the shop. Might have to, might have to implement that, that here today. So. me here now we got to get to work i'm just gonna jump in the chopper and go i don't have to worry about this right we just pile the loads <laughs> uh, all right so he's neatly going to try go a little farther forward nate set this against the blade <clears throat> There we go. Now he's gonna go ahead and push down on the blade a little bit. And uh, don't spill his coffee, or is he picked that? I'm wondering if we should pull it out first and look at that axle before we push it in. I'll go ahead and get a chain that we can wrap around the tire. Well, we've got this broken loose, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to inspect the axle to make sure that the axle is all right. So we can push that in now. Hey, fingers, measure it with your fingers on the other side. Just measure it with your fingers. Is she two fingers or three wide? Yeah. <laughs> there goes Johnny. Not working so good. I got to find the center. I got to find the yeah, I think you gotta take the chain off and uh, let me let me let me pushes on it. Oh boy, Mickey Mouse wrapped all the chain on this side. I should have had that hook out here. You know? Trouble is, I'm not straight with it, I don't think. We're going on. We're gonna put it on. Pushing it on. I gotta get under straight. I'm not straight. Watch your feet. We might have to raise that again. Huh? No, that 
right, that gets poured right in. Might have to push the top too. Yeah, I think you got it. Yeah, we're. Raise it up. Yeah, there you go. All right. Make sure you don't get pinched between the forklift and the. You got a. We found the sweet spot. Look at that, we found it. To find the sweet spot, how many fingers did you have in there? I don't know. I mean, what do you got on that other side? You got it three over there? You got four? Okay. I'm not straight underneath the... it up. Yeah, there you go. Whoa. There's a mark. Is that a mark on the axle? A white mark? Okay. But measure, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but what do you have? You... Yeah, see, the other one is in a different spot, I think. Up and down, what's your back gap like? Four inches more. Hey, he's got to raise it again. Yeah. All right, let me get it straight. That's why it might be, that's why it might look like it's okay. It might still have to go some more. Whoa, crap. Yeah, but see, we gotta get it square. Oh, now it's way past the We gotta cut that out. Well, let's get the bottom. We gotta cut that out. All right, pull your chain over. Somebody running the forklift here went too far. Is that you, Christian? You screwed it up. Okay. We can move it out a little bit, and then we'll leave it, and then, uh, Christian, you'll just have to keep an eye on this today. 
Don't let this happen again. Leave it right there. All right. Do we? Uh... All right. So these are numbered. Uh, can you see them good enough, or do you want to mark them? They all have to be tightened in order, and it's hard to see the numbers. Sometimes a one gets mixed up for a seven, and an eight for a three. couple of tightening sequences torque it then we'll uh huh did it i could push it get on the bottom let me push it So they'll go through this a number of times. Well, we've got the inner one torque. Dual hub is going on, and then the same thing happened to this 9320 the other day, too. So, these young gents are gonna retorque these, but they're gonna do it without the uh, torque wrench. Uh, do you need to flip your socket end around? Don't punch him in the face now. That's pretty tight. Yeah. Yeah, I think you got it. Where's number two? <laughs> you can look at this one out here. So, this one out here, where was one at? It's uh, one to take there. Yeah, well. Yeah. I don't know. To the right, is that an eight or a seven? To the right of the one. Oh, uh, that should be seven. the same as that one. You can't see them, but you could look on these numbers here, Andrew, and tell them where these guys got to be at. Number one is at 5 o'clock, like between 5 and 6, 5.30. So... Impact and gauge. All right. Well, we've got that hub all on. Now we can just lift this guy up and, uh, set it into place. We might not have enough slack in our chain to 
to get this to do what we want to. She might work though. Don't let it pinch you, Nathan. Let it fall back to that one hole and put that one in at 12 o'clock. Down, all right. So we're not quite doing this the way you're supposed to do it. Hold on a minute, let's get more thread in there. You don't wanna screw up the bolt hole at all, cause I've done that. So, bump, no, bump, bump it in a little bit. All right, we got good thread holding. I've done this before, Nate, and I screwed up hubs. Yeah. It's only a good idea when it's when it works properly. Sometimes it don't work properly. I probably gotta go up before I go down. No, that'll work. Probably gotta go up a little. Hey, move the chain a little bit towards 12 o'clock. To go. All right, so. All right. So we'll get our chain removed, get our forklift out of the way. We'll get all the rest of the bolts is in. This thing here is all back together. Nate will keep an eye on that today. Washed his windows last night. Notice that one tire was a little closer than the other one. Now, like I was mentioning, the same thing happened to this tractor the other day. The dual or the inner wheels moved out. I know why that happened because we had everything apart over the winter. We have torqued it a few times, but with pushing silage, it gets jerking and yanking and spanking and everything else. So these guys are going through now, tightening up that inner wheel. Just If he falls backwards, Andrew, make sure you can catch him. So he doesn't hit his head on here. You be careful there, Davey. Jeez. Yeah. So we got a new guy here. Everybody's gonna be asking who you are. So this is Christian here. We've we've been trying him out for a little while, and it looks as though we're gonna keep you. So. You've been been doing pretty good. You've been doing pretty good. All right. So these are numbered, and they're looking on the outside one so that they can see on the uh, inside. Did you have any loose on the other side? No, nothing was loose. Okay, these are okay, so they're getting that number three, that had a good amount of movement to it. Oh, did it? 
So they're going through and now they're getting a little out of this side. So um, yeah, it is a real pain in the ass when the duel is on there, but these young men are are getting it. So what they've got is a John Deere tool on a breaker bar. Yep, you're on it. Just be careful you don't fall there, bub. Yeah. All right. We better get the chop in here, right, Nate? You need loads to push. Yeah. yeah. So we have Mike who is going to get the first load of the day and then Andrew's in on back here.
right, Andrew, you're just about loaded. Move over to the right as far as you can and then hold it. Hold it on the right hand side. started in uh, was too green we got around that one and had to pull out now we're in the one down and behind it Andrews pulled up we are loading him now and I think we're gonna have to pull out of this field as well going through the chopper right now is 68% moisture. And it's just not going to be too good. We keep going. This is the field that we cut around the outside so my brother could get down to the one end into the woods to bury one of his horses. We first chopped around the outside of this on September 16th. We were getting like 74% moisture then. Today is October 14th and we're running a 67.2% uh, moisture on the field average. And we've only chopped three and a half acres in here. Andrew, you got to back up, Bub. Just got to back up and reset here, Andrew. So, we're going to have to pull out of here and go down the road and uh, try one of those fields. If the moisture isn't any better on that, we're going to have to go back into conventional corn and let this sit for 
few more days anyways. So we'll get clipped across here and uh, I think we're going to have to go to that next field. Andrew says I'm in the wrong gear. I got a shift. <laughs> Jumping around here anyways, and uh, I don't know, trying to find some dry corn. left the field. They heard me on the radio. And uh, we'll just have to keep on keeping on here.
at the bottom of the hill. We do have one more field that should be in a little better shape. You guys can just about see it over the top of Sarah's truck.
dropped, uh, this is 70% on this one, and so we are not going to be able to stay here. Let's see if we can
keep an eye in front of me. I have a power pole that I need to go around. There's a guide wire cable coming off into the field. We won't go and grab that with the edge of the game. So it takes a little bit to keep the corn in the truck when you're looking overhead in front of you and behind you and alongside you. But we managed. We managed to keep the telephone lines in the air. The corn head pieces on the corn head. A majority of the corn that were cut made its way into the truck and we were also able to leave the guide wire cable hooked to the anchor going to that power pole in behind us. So the moisture on this corn is right where we want it. This is absolutely perfect. Yeah. 
what is going through the chopper right now is 63.4%. So that is perfect.